What's up guys, Gary here with GenVFX today talking about the Asset Browser. Um, a lot of people have already talked about this, that's fine. I just want to go through a little bit more information about the importance of the objects themselves and how you can adjust them. Uh, because things are a bit things are a bit clever with the Asset Browser, cleverer than you immediately think. Oh yes, yes they are. Um, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to uh, uh, basically, if you don't know how to make an asset, first of all, the ha first thing you have to do is you go into your preferences and you go into your file paths and you set up a name it could be anything um, i've caught mine is called asset library because why not and then you put the path of where this exists and you can also add more you can add more libraries if you want to in different places so you'd have one which is just like a building library or a castles library or a whatever's library but you have to have a place where you put them so basically if you had one which is basically specific to a certain type of say decade or whatever you could have a path that's in assets and it would be castles and then you'd have an assets military and you'd put your military objects into that one and so on but they could they'd all be accessible but you can of course just categorize your stuff but here's the important thing when you are actually saving your scene with your asset in you need to save it into that directory path otherwise it stays as an asset purely inside of your scene so for example I have here a box. It's a default box, very useful. And I'm gonna change this to edit mode and I'm gonna make sure I select every single one of those points. GZ1 to put it directly onto the floor. Not that it actually matters so much. Um, and let's uh, select some edges. One, two, three, and four. Let's control B on those and we'll bold those in. And then let me pick top polygon. And let's go inset like this and then let's go extrude like this and then we go inset again and we'll extrude this down so it's just a kind of just a, a shape and a, a tubey whatever let's call it so let's call the file and let's go save as and or in fact no i'll save it into my shots folder and we'll call it tubey tubey or not tubey that is the question so i'm now going to then pull up here and change this to the asset browser now i have assets in here of course but you can see that this is my current file i can get to the asset library but i can't add this uh mark as an asset okay i will but it's not in here it's gone into my current file because my file is not saved in the asset library area so let's just let's just clear that asset get rid of that and now I'm going to save this instead into, and this is the thing, I'm going to save it into, up oh, one more Gary, assets, models, and I'm going to call it tube.blend. Let's save it now. Okay. So now, asset library, I've got some things here. I can now go here to my cube, and I can now mark this as an asset. And it has gone right here, right here, into my asset library because the object is saved in the actual path where the asset library is. So that's an important thing. You can't just make one anywhere. You have to actually make sure your file is saved in that folder for it to be accessible via your asset library. So let's get rid of QB now. Now, what you can do with assets, as you are probably aware, is you've got a bunch of different ways of bringing them in. You've got, I'm gonna go them back, do them, do them in reverse. You have, append reuse data and what that means is well let me bring in a flat crate that i've got here and i'll bring in another flat crate there and another flat crate there now if i put this into a mode where you can see the shading on them there you go it's not very good uh, so i want to change the shading on all of them uh, but i want them to I'll, I'll just i want brush chrome on that one and it happens to all of them and that's because every time you've brought in an object that is the same as a previous version of the object. They are in fact instances. So that's it. Whatever shade you want to put on it, that stays there. If you want to try and edit uh, a surface of this object, you think, oh, well, I can just, uh, I'll just go and change this. Yep, look at that. Look at that. Changed it on every single one of them because they are instances, which is great in its own right. A little bit limiting sometimes if you want to have something that is multiple versions of an object but you want to have a different shader on them. So that kind of brings us into a different situation. So I'm just going to go and use this and get rid of this. Uh, don't save that. But I will 
push up here and go back to my asset browser. And let's go to the asset library. And I'm going to get rid of that cube. And let's bring in uh, a flat crate. But instead of using append reuse data, I'm going to change that to append. Now the point of append is basically I'm going to bring it in as an absolute straightforward copy. It's going to be a copy. Now there's a shader on it, of course, which is the metal box one, which I promise you looks better in cycles. And it doesn't look great, but that's not the point. And I'll bring in another version of flat crate. I'm going to rotate that one around a bit. And I'm going to bring in another version of flat crate. I'm going to pop it. Let's just pop it on. Let's just pop him on top like that. And because that's a little bit low, where left faces, I'll bring that down there like this. There we go. And let's rotate this around a tad. Oh dear. Gary, what are you doing? Right, there you go. Like that. Shift it back a little bit. Um, but I don't want that one to be that same metal. I don't want it box metal one. I want it to be, oh, what should I make it? Let's make it red plastic. And I can do that because these are appended. So if I go into edit mode here and I pick these points and I pull these up, look at that. It's only happened to that one object. So that is quite, quite an important thing. So this is where this one here, the link, this to me is the interesting one. Because if I go back to my models, if I drag this and drop this here, I can put that there, I'll put that there. I'm gonna put a uh, brush chrome on that one. Move it over here. And I'm going to rotate it around here. That's fine, there we go. All well and good, lovely, lovely, lovely. But if I want to bring an object and I don't want anyone to touch it, I don't want anyone to do anything to it, I change that to link. I drag this in, you'll notice it just says the word shader base, that's it. But there's no indication of where it drops. So I'm gonna let go and it puts it exactly where it is in the scene that it is created from. And you'll notice again, the little linking icon. So this is basically like a locked reference object, which actually is fantastic. Fantastic, and I'll show you why. I'm gonna very quickly, I'm just gonna save this as, let's not put it there. Uh, let's go back to GenVFX. We'll go into the GenVFX folder. We'll go to the tuts and we'll go into our 54 asset library. And I will call this test scene. Save that as that. I'm not gonna right click on this and I'm going to go open blend file. And this is gonna go full size because of the way my computer is set up. Uh, basically, I've got a bigger monitor than 1920, obviously. And I'm going to make this a little bit smaller. Bear with me if I can just adjust this down here. Come here. Come on. Little fella. Oh, he's too tiny. He's a teeny tiny blender window. So cute. Um, and this is our base file. If I turn this around, that is our object. That's the object that we are referencing. Now say I've been working on this and I've made an alter. I've got it to a certain point, but I need to update it. I don't want anyone to mess with it. They've got it in their scene, but it's just got to be changed. So what I can do, let's go down here, down this one view. In fact, let's, let's isolate it in that view. And I'm going to go to edit mode, I've got faces, and I'm going to select all of these down to there. And I want the rest of the ones on the ball. Press L to link those. And let's scale those down and let's just push them up in the Z to there. And there we have a little look. Now that is uh, my new version of the model. And I will go object mode and I will go file save. And then when we go back to our original file, you will see that it's nothing's changed. And the reason for that basically is because we need to close this file and then reopen it. So we'll save it right now and then and let's go open and let's click on test scene again. And there you go, it's changed, which is exactly what you would hope for. And it's a totally immovable file. I can't move that, you'll notice if I go into here in location, nothing, I can't change a thing. I can change the dimensions, I can make it look bigger or smaller, but nothing else can be touched, which is absolutely fantastic. I mean, that's, it's, 
it's just a great way of making sure that when you do something, if it's a linked asset, it will always be controlled by yourself somewhere else. So no one else can meddle with it. No one else can footle with it. I could say many words um, with many letters and some with not so many letters to describe exactly how perfect that can be. So, you know, that's that's it. You know, that's that's done, that's dusted. But I, I have to say, personally, I just like to append. For example, I've got a little, uh, say I've got my little space station here. Yeah, little space station, which has got that thing in the middle. But also you can see that it's also got some other boxes in there as well. Some of them are appended, some of them are not. Some of them are appended with reuse. And then we've got funny little cables and stuff, like a tent tentacle kind of cable. There we are. Show me some wires. Show me some wires, I tell you. There we go. Um, yeah, so it's just it's just another little another little scene. But you see that asset, I changed it, and therefore it changes in there. No, it's brilliant. Uh, uh, the asset library is really, really good. Um, and used correctly, it could save you so much time. Um, that's it, really. That was it. Just talking about basically the differences between how you bring them in, append with reuse data, which basically, as I said, is any block that's brought in that's the same with that one has the same information. If you change it on one, it changes on all the others. If you have append, that's basically just import the object, please. And link is a referenced, totally and utterly referenced in every possible sense. Yeah, that's it. Uh, take care, guys. I will see you in the next one. All being well. Um, right, take care, guys. Speak to you soon. Bye.